Welcome to Channel AMEC, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Carl Young, your online YouTube visa consultant. Are you interested about migrate to Australia? Why don't you consider to subscribe to our channel and turn on a little bell on the side so once we have all the insight and news, you'll be the first one of getting all the information. Now in this video, we would like to take you a little bit of a pathway to introductory of what Australia is all about. Uh, a lot of people know my channel due to the uh, information about visas, migration and things like that. But have you ever considered uh, people who hasn't really actually known about Australia? Now, I thought about that and I think about, I, actually I haven't ever done any video about this yet. So in this video, I would like to take an introduction of what Australia is all about. Okay, so a lot of people come to Australia, first of all, uh, by knowing uh, a option to actually study abroad and choose Australia as one of the destination to actually study with their higher education or perhaps their TAFE or their uh, technical studies. Uh, so Australia has actually be become our uh, second largest uh, international education pro providing countries in the world uh, behind USA. Uh, a lot of people will ask, uh, what about UK and what about Canada? Well, they are actually very strong as well, but the statistics actually shown that Australia has actually overtook uh, UK and Canada and who had become the second largest international education country, which uh, people actually prefer nowadays. Uh, obviously, the reason of this is due to its uh, quality of their uh, education and providers. Uh, Australia has f about 44 university altogether. Um, however, in compared to what Canada's uh, number of university, I think Canada has 90 something. It's about double of the number of Australian university, but uh, with uh, uh, half of the number of university, Australia actually achieved much better result, uh, basically due to the quality of the services. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show that the reason that Australia has become the second largest is also it's about the location of Australia. Now, very interested, uh, uh, Australia is at the southern hemisphere, which is uh, not really common to a lot of other, most of the countries around the world, uh, but it's it's actually in the southern area uh, of Asia, and it's close to Asia as well. So close to India and close to China, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Philippines, Indonesia, and Vietnam. It's the travel distance between these area in compare to travel to um, United States or, or Canada or perhaps UK, it's a much shorter distance between those countries. And as you can see, most of the international education sectors nowadays uh, are coming from Asia. And that's the reason why Australia had become uh, the second largest international education provider in the world. Now, there is another advantage of uh, having studying in Australia is obviously about the uh, time zone. Uh, Australia is only, um, if we're looking at the eastern borders of so Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne, the, 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 the time zone dis differences between there and Asia is only about two to three hours. Uh, and if we go to Perth, uh, which has no time zone differences between uh, Perth and Southeast Asia or Eastern Asia. Uh, obviously, there will be a time zone difference between uh, India and uh, and Australia. However, uh, in compare to those time differences, uh, it's still much less uh, than what the what they were experience uh, in compared to uh, UK or Canada or perhaps USA. And that's another big thing about Australia. Now, going into Australia as a nation, obviously, the, uh, the, 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 it doesn't have as many provinces or states as what um, uh, Canada or United States has. So it's not that complex. Uh, it consists of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six states and one ter uh, 
four, uh, four states and two territory because Northern Territory is actually called territory, not a state. I'm not too sure why they do that. I think it's because the uh, the population wise. Uh, anyhow, it's Northern Territory at the top, and then we go Queensland at the um, uh, uh, northeast, and then southern border to New South Wales, and then Victoria. And then in the middle, there's uh, South Australia. Now, South Australia is uh, one of the key states of Australia because it connects, as you can see, it connects to more, all the major states, Western Australia, Northern Territory, Queensland, New South Wales, and Victoria. And it has a big port here. As you can see geographically, a huge port here. And, and hence, that was the reason why uh, the back to 200 something years ago, uh, South Australia was been picked uh, for a destination for vineyards and brewing all the nice red wines and things like that uh, anyhow if we go to west we go we see western australia where uh, perth will be the capital city of western australia now um western australia has most of the population in the uh, uh, west, uh southwest uh, where, the, where the perth is as you can see on the map it's pretty easy to dictate because uh, it's all the green area they can see so that's where most of the population is gonna be and uh, the other areas are more all in um, agriculture and mining uh, as I can see here so that's the uh, pretty simple as you can see now uh, and we're missing out one is one at the very bottom is Tasmania as you can see here right down here uh, Tasmania uh, is an island uh, it's actually not that small but 90 percent of the land is all uh habitats and um uh environment and control uh it does have a major city there's hobart where you have the university of tasmania there uh, a lot of people pick the, uh, the destination to go to tasmania due to the nature and also uh obviously it's a regional area there now coming back to um to Australia as a nation for uh, uh, international education a destination the other big thing is all about visa as well now Australia was uh, one of the first uh, coined about temporary graduate visa now what does that mean that means Australia actually offer uh, a work a, a graduate work a visa so if you go to Australia and meet the requirement by a, a, a study two years where they define that as in Australian study requirement uh, you will be eligible to actually access to this post study work stream uh, under the temporary graduate work visa subclass 4A5 which allows you to actually continue to stay for additional two years in order for you to actually work in Australia, find your career and actually being experienced, live and work in Australia. Now, there is another new incentive where the uh, uh, nation of Australia and, and Department of Immigration had coined uh, a couple of years ago is that uh, if your destination of international education uh, is at a, an area of so-called regional Australia, you will be accessed a further uh, 12 month um, temporary graduate visa so that means your working visa after you graduate you'll be able to access about two to three years now, now that's brilliant that's another reason why uh, Australia has attracted so many international students uh, into Australia whereby uh, they can complete their studies and they will be have opportunity to actually find work in Australia as well now the other thing that I want to mention is about the cost of the uh, the tuitions. Now, in in compare in comparison uh, for the major big universities and costs, uh, Australia's cost in tuition is much. Uh, obviously it's much uh, cheaper uh, in compared to UK and USA and some of the in Canada uh, and the other thing is Aussie dollars Australian dollars uh, does vary over time so if the Aussie dollar comes down to about and compared to US to about 0.5 now that's half of the price compared if you want to go to UK to study or go, go into USA to study as well so in, in in talking about the university, we must know uh, there is uh, a brain name Group of Eight. Now, Group of Eight are basically the top eight universities in Australia, where they group themselves together and call themselves Group of Eight. Uh, 
not too sure the reason why they do that, but I think it's more of a brain, uh, and, and they wanted to promote the uh, e the quality of education of Australia uh, internationally. That's that's how they want to do it. Now, obviously, nowadays you go to any of these official websites, they all talk about this COVID there and COVID here, things like that. But anyhow, group of eight. Here we go. That's the group of eight. So you can see. Uh, University of Western Australia and Monash University, Australian National University, uh, University of Adelaide, University of Melbourne, University of New South Wales, University of Queensland, and University of Sydney. So that's the group of A, and these group of A are actually in the top hundreds of the most uh, quality education providers around the world. So obviously, it depends on what, what subjects that you're picking uh, and major that you're picking, but. Um, uh, this group A had actually been actually been very, very successful uh, as how Australia's international education had actually uh, beat uh, the, uh, the the education in Canada. That's another big thing there. Now, apart from higher education, there's also um, technical part of the education that uh, Australia offers. So I've shown you TAFE Queensland, where you can actually study, you know, mechanics. Uh, chef and cookery, uh, what else, carpentry, uh, nursing and things like that. So these are also the big things that people come into Australia to study. And there's also TAFE all around uh, Australia. So there's TAFE New South Wales. It's uh, uh, more of a static uh, website rather than how Queensland TAFE rep represent themselves here. Now, finally, I wanted to show you is the actual cost. And so what is the cost of coming to Australia? Now, Australian government do have a stat, stats showing this as well. So education living costs in Australia. And th this you can you can actually find it in studyinaustralia.gov.au. Uh, so if we go down here, you can see the accommodations. So um, hostels and guest house, uh, 90 to $150 per week. Uh, share rental is 95 to 215 per week. On campus, 100 and 10 to 280 per week uh, and home stays that basically includes uh, meals uh, so breakfast and lunch and dinner uh, that's more for high school students uh, between 235 to 325 per week and rental so if you want to go out and rent your own apartments or rent your own house uh, it's between 185 to 440 per week and boarding house this is more for high school as well so you can choose either homestay or boarding house some high school have their own boarding house uh, and they'll go for a year so uh, 11,000 to 22,000 per uh, year okay other living okay grocery uh, about 140 to 280 per week gas electricity $10 to $20 per week phone and internet 15 to 30 per week uh, public transport so we taking train um, uh, take taking a um, tram or train <laughs> a thirty dollar to sixty dollars per week or bus sorry uh, car if you are, you want to get a car and drive around a hundred fifty to two hundred sixty per week now people ask how how the hell we're we gonna have hundred fifty gas or uh, petrol costs on this now I think this is more uh, towards including the uh, parking fees so if you go in city you need to park you need to pay uh, go to uh, university campuses you need to park and pay so that's including the parking fees uh, entertainment eighty dollars to hundred fifty per week and cost of living if you bringing uh, if you're coming as a student guardian or you're a partner or you're dependent so student guardians costing about uh, 21,000 and 41 I'm not too sure how they end up with that sort of number 21 uh, and 21,000 41 dollars the 41 I'm not too sure how to get 41 anyway that's how uh, gum calculate stuff and probably just average everybody's uh, uh, costs and livings uh, partners you if you're a partner spouse uh, it will cost an additional 7362 So if you're going into Australian study and bring your partner, that's how the cost will be. And if you bring your child, there's a, a little... Uh, that that doesn't... No, 3152 that's not the tuition fee. That's just living costs. Uh, but the ch tuition fee will be a separate cost to this. So that's basically uh, what you are looking for if you wanted to come to Australia. So again, this video is more about an introduction of Australia and how Australian international education is about and how they cost, how they become so famous, famous uh, and their geographic 
uh, area location, uh, time zone differences, and cost of living and cost of tuition. So, what is your thought? Do you think Australia is a good place to study and a good place to actually become a, a international student to be there? Why don't you leave your comment right down below and share with your views? Thank you for watching. I see you in the next video. Goodbye.